Hey everybody, in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to set up R and RStudio. So why might you wanna install R if you're interested in computational social science? Well, R has rapidly become one of the most important tools that we use in computational social science. There are other great programming languages out there too, like Python, but R is unique in that it really sits in between social science, data science, and especially statistics. It can do many different things, uh, visualizing data, collecting data, analyzing data, um, using the latest techniques from statistics. Um, it's really a wonderful language um, that I'm really excited to introduce to you. Now, one really cool thing about R is that it's completely free. It's open source software. That means that no single person or, or company kind of develops R. Instead, R is built, like Python and many other open source languages, by an entire community of people. Now, that has some great advantages. I already mentioned that it's free. It also means that people can quickly adapt and expand the language to meet the new needs of, say, computational social scientists. So let's say a new social media platform comes along and someone wants to figure out how to collect data from it. Well, someone might build on some add-on functionality to R that might allow other people to collect data from that platform. And it might take, say, an industry-sponsored project uh, a lot longer to catch up to that. And the industry project probably wouldn't be shared publicly. So open source software is great for a lot of different reasons. But there are some downsides. The main downside is that there's no kind of user hotline to call when you get in trouble, when you can't figure out what's going on. Um, why? Well, because all these people are, are contributing, um, they're already spending a lot of time building R. And user support, helping other people, is something that's kind of up to the generosity of different people. And there are wonderfully generous people out there, and there are wonderfully um, wonderful resources out there to learn R already. Um, but really, at the end of the day, nobody's getting paid to answer emails or answer a phone about questions about R. So this can be frustrating when you're new to the community. You have to learn how to navigate the community, where to go to ask questions, how to interpret strange error messages. And in this video, in the videos that follow, I'm going to try to offer that really beginner level um, skill set that you need to, to dive in. Okay. So, when we're using R, we usually use two things. One is R itself, and the other is R Studio. So we're gonna to begin today by downloading R. So I'm just opening up Google here, Googling download R, and this has taken me to the R project. Now you'll see I have a couple different options for downloading. Um, I'm on a Mac here, so I'm gonna choose download R from Mac OS X. And here you'll see there's different uh, releases of R. Now, if you've used other kinds of software a lot, you know that often things get updated, right? You get a software update, you click on that, and it might protect you from viruses or something like that. Well, with R, um, because it's constantly evolving, there's lots of different releases. Now, if you're new to R, you can just go ahead and click on this latest release. But let me tell you a little bit why, about why people might care which version of R that they're using. Suppose I've been using R for a long time and I wrote a lot of code to do some really cool research, but that was two years ago. Well, a lot's changed in R and other software in the open source uh, environment that R depends on has changed during that time. And so if I want my code to run again, uh, I might run into compatibility issues. And that's why people might care about which version of R they might install, and there might be some limitations related to their operating system. If you have an older machine, for example, you might have to install an older version of R. But here we go, we've got R downloaded. I'm just gonna click on it to start the installation dialog and work through it here. This is simply telling me what's being installed. I'm agreeing to the terms of use. It's telling me how much space it's gonna take up on my computer. And here we go. So now R, which is kind of like the brains of, of the program, is, is installed on my computer. Um, but very few people use R to do analysis in R. By far the most um, common way to use R is with RStudio. RStudio is called a graphical user interface. That just means something that you see 
that you interact with that allows you to control R. So let's go ahead and download R Studio, and hopefully as I demo it here, it'll be a little more clear what it is and how you use it. So I'm here at the download R Studio site. I need to choose my version. You'll see here there's several different versions. Some of these are really expensive. That's because R Studio is used by people in industry who want to collaborate and have various features that allow them to more seamlessly integrate their workflow. Um, fortunately, by charging companies money, R Studio can keep our, um, our regular free version available, and that is an extremely powerful program that should serve most of your needs. So this website should have automatically determined what operating system you're on. So you can go ahead and click download. I'm downloading it from Mac and it's being downloaded to my download folder. Now I downloaded this a little bit earlier, it's still going here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the download folder. Close this. Okay, so now our studio is downloaded on my computer. The next thing I have to do is drag it into the applications folder. Now, if you're on a Windows machine, the process is gonna be very similar. Um, you're gonna to wanna to add this to your um, applications folder. Um, same thing, um, get it set up and, and maybe install a shortcut to your start menu. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and drag mine down to my dock here so that it's always easily accessible because I use R a lot and um, you may too. Okay. So let's open up our studio and I'll give you a brief little tour about how it works. Now, when we first open up our studio, sometimes we might get some messages. Um, this one is just verifying that the um, application is what it says it is. And next we're gonna probably see a screen that asks us whether we wanna allow our operating system to use our studio because we didn't buy it through the app store. In this case, this is an Apple security feature, that's fine. Um, and now finally, we're opening up our studio. Okay, so as we look around here, you'll see there are a few different panes here. Um, there's this pane over here, this pane over here, and this pane over here. Um, in R, I can open up a new file, and in R I can create lots of different kinds of files. I could create um, a code script, I could create a presentation, I could create a web page, I could create an app. There's lots of different stuff that R could do. I'm gonna select R script here. I could have also come over to this little uh, green dot here and clicked R script. And now you'll see I have these four panes and I'm gonna explain what each one of these panes does. So in the upper left-hand corner, here we have the code editor window. This is where I can input instructions into R um, and I can save this file later to rerun everything I've done in a session of coding. So for example, let's just do some simple math. I wrote two plus two. I can highlight this and click run and get an answer in my console. The console is where the output of your code will show up. So it's a little cumbersome to highlight and, and click here. Some people like to highlight and do a keyboard shortcut, control enter. Um, if you place your cursor anywhere on a line and press control enter, it will also run that same line of code. Okay, so that's the very basic uh, kind of workflow of just inputting some instructions into R and seeing some output. Um, let's now move over to this environment pane up here. Now, this environment pane describes all of the objects that you're gonna be working with in R. Now, in a future video, I'm gonna tell you all about objects. Objects can be things like data frames, data sets, uh, vectors, lists of things, um, or even functions. Those are short little snippets of programs that you write to do other things. So I'll just give you a quick example. Um, I'm gonna create an object, which is called four, which is two plus two. So I've created an object here in R. This caret operator assigns everything on the right side to the value of everything on the left side here. And so now you can see in my environment pane, I've got a new object called my number. Pretty cool. Um, so normally during a typical working session, I might create lots of different objects and then perform an analysis or save some data. Okay, another unusual thing about R is we move down to this fourth pane over here. 
um, we're now looking at your working directory. Your working directory is the place on your computer where R is either going to read in files or save files. Now, most of the programs you may be using on your computer don't, have, don't make you specify a working directory. Just somewhere on your computer, they automatically save something. R gives you the power to specify where you want to read in and save stuff because sometimes we need to do very complex operations. So grab some data from online, merge it with a spreadsheet, save it somewhere else, and repeat that, say, hundreds of times. And so getting used to the concept of a working directory is a little tricky. People want to think of like saving their work and then having it all be in the same place. A more typical workflow in RStudio is to save, um, save some of your work into a, uh, some kind of working directory, open it up, and then remake whatever you did. Um, so let me give you an example here. Right now our R script here is called untitled. Let's go ahead and give it a name. Um, we've now saved a file called my R script into our home directory here. Now by default, um, a Mac will say, will, R will specify your home folder as the location where things are being saved. I came down here and clicked on my folder, and now I want to um, try to find my home directory here. So I'm in my downloads folder right now. I don't have my home folder available here, but I can come up to the go menu and choose home. And now you can see I'm in my home directory, and here is my R script. Now, suppose I close out of RStudio and um, I come back later to open my R script because I wanted to remember what 2 plus 2 is. Um, I could try double clicking on here um, and you'll see it's opening in, um, in RStudio. Now, that's a good thing. Often that won't happen. Often this will open in the R program. So we installed two things, R and RStudio. By default, your Mac will assume everything should open in R. Um, if your programs start to open in R, what you're gonna wanna do is come to that file, right click, go to get info, and there's some analogous processes on a Windows machine to change the default program that will open a file. And then when, it comes, when you come to open with here, you'll have a few different options to choose what you wanna open the file with. Okay. So now we've kind of gone over the very basics of what these four panes are. You're probably wondering what these tabs are here. What is a package? What's the viewer? What's history? We're gonna go over all that in future videos. I just wanted to give you a brief tour to get you up to speed um, with, with how our studio works. Now, um, people like to customize their R studio. Um, if you wanna do that, you can come on over here to the preferences pane. And then you'll see there's a variety of different things. If you're a already skilled at programming, you might want to set up some, say, keyboard shortcuts. Um, if you prefer a different look to your R, you can choose here from a lot of different uh, styles. And if I, for example, choose um, this style um, and add it to my R session here, it's going to restart my, um, my session of R here. But when it comes back up, we'll see this sleek new black um, kind of theme. Okay, so that's hopefully all you need to get set up with our studio. Um, in our next video, we're going to be looking at creating some basic objects, then we're going to get into visualization, and then we're going to get into the basics of programming. See you soon.